Matt with Olympus Reptiles. Here's the deal. So we went to Branson and we filmed a ton of footage and I kind of filmed too much. So we had to break the Branson's Wild World up into two parts. So what you're about to see is part two of Branson's Wild World. Make sure to stay for the whole thing. There's a lot of cool animals on there to include some singing dogs, some really cool vipers, and just some neat stuff all around. So I hope you guys enjoy Branson's Wild World part two. All right, guys, this is one of my all-time favorite venomous snakes, and this is one that Question Girl has had him, and I can't ever keep in the house. Let's get down here and get personal with the Gaboon Viper. Oh, I love these. <laughs> Cord just fell on me. Sorry about that. Anyway, these things now, look at the purples in the back. Before we even get into the size, I, mean, I just want to cover the beauty of them. Uh, they're just so gorgeous. They look like velvet, and they have that big triangular body. They get really thick. I love the purple hue that you see in that repeating pattern. And then the back stripe is just so completely different than the side pattern. It almost looks like a rug. It looks not real. So Grandpa, what are you thinking about these? Well, I've never seen one before, but I don't think I'd like to meet up with him anyway. Let me tell you a few things about these. These are not the biggest uh, or longest venomous snake in the world. You know, king cobras are that. but. These guys get a really heavy body. They can weigh over 40 pounds. They'll get really thick. And look at the size of the head. The whole grill in that head will be bigger than my fist, which is just awesome to think about. And then you can actually see their eyes rotate as they follow you, which is so cool. And they got the little horns on the top of their head that kind of help them attract prey. They're an ambush predator, so what they're going to do is they're going to sit and they're going to wait. And if you imagine that snake covered in a bunch of leaf litter from like the jungles or wherever, they're going to hide. They're going to just disappear. You won't even see them. No matter how big the body is, that pattern breaks up so much. Such a great natural camo. I mean, it's gone. So it's going to sit there and it's going to wait. And when a prey item comes by, it's going to let go. It has a very, 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 very fast strike. It can also strike in 360 degrees. So it's a strong enough body that it can sit there, flip upside down and come backwards. It won't do that for prey, but it will do that to defend itself. But then it's going to use the longest fangs that it, in, of any snake up to two inches to catch that prey, inject really highly toxic venom. And while they're not the most toxic, these guys in Eastern Diamondbacks produce the highest venom load in the world. So they have a lot of it and it's extremely toxic. I mean, it's not on par with Taipan toxicity or anything like that, but they have so much more of it. They can push a really, really deadly bite really, really fast. Uh, what amazes me, one is a two inch fangs long to pure elephant hide. And two, this snake will get so big, you think, that thing can't possibly move quick. And it's one of the fastest pit vipers there are when it lets a strike go and deadly accurate. So it's just this wild animal. And then the heads, the heads are literally, it look like a spear. It's so wide, just a beautiful, beautiful animal. And plus me loving purple and you get that purple hue all through it. And this is a very, very pretty specimen with a lot of color. Some are much more drab. Uh, but this thing is just, it's just gorgeous. It's still got some growing to do, but man, it's amazing. I love these pit vipers. This is by far, you know, it's when you get away from rattlesnakes, which are my favorites, then it comes into this. Gaboon vipers are it for me. All right, I'm going to show you a rattlesnake I don't have. And you guys know I've got all kinds of rattlesnakes, but this is one that's on my list if we ever get our exhibits open, and that is an Eastern Diamondback. And you can easily tell these from a Western one, the color is different. But if the color isn't enough for you to make sure because it's got the same kind of diamond pattern, is look at the tail. Well, this turns to stripes. It's not the black and white rings of the Western. So it's a really quick way to tell an Eastern from a Western. And they're also only going to be found in way different areas. They don't really cross. But uh, a couple things. Look how thick this is. Eastern Diamondbacks are typically the longest, although the longest on record is actually held by a Western. That's not a typical Western. Easterns typically are longer than Western Diamondbacks, and they're much, much heavier. They hold the record for the biggest rattlesnake in the world, it would be the Eastern Diamondback. So, just focus on this thing, dear, is what I want you to do. And look at this, it's actually crawling around. Look at those big old eyes, and just look at that big old head. They actually have the highest venom production, too, of any of the rattlesnakes. Easterns are just a bad, bad animal. And you know, I love rattlesnakes because they're so North American and South American, but they're American. They cover the Americas, but this, I mean, this is the first diamondback that, you know, traditional America came across. Of course, Native Americans were around all of them, and depending on what tribes they were from. But when they went down the East Coast and started getting to Florida, they started running into these guys. You know, timber rattlesnake was the first rattlesnake that Americans really came across when they came over from Europe. And then it was probably going to be these guys they ran into next. 
and they were probably thinking, what kind of land did we try to inhabit? Because they didn't have anything like this over where they came from that would shake its tail and make a noise and then, you know, be able to inflict that type of bite that they can inflict. Here's the kicker. That tail, everybody is, well, why do they shake their tail? Why do they make noise? It wasn't developed for us. It was developed because the big hoofed animals would trample them. And so rattlesnakes develop that noise to keep from being trampled on, not to help us find them. Uh, but they use it to warn, and it's a warning so they don't have to bite. I mean, if you think if a big hoofed animal trampled on a rattlesnake, it's going to kill the snake most likely. The snake out of that is going to bite that hoofed animal, which in the wild would be a death sentence. And it's not going to help either animal. So by developing this, it saves the rattlesnake and it saves the hoofed animal. Question from Question Girl. Uh, do they get this large out in the wild, or is it yes. a captive size? This is a captive snake, but they get this large out in the wild. Easterns can get very, very massive. Unfortunately, eastern numbers are dwindling. Western populations are very, very stable. There's a lot of westerns. Depending on where you go, there's almost too many of them in some places. But easterns are not having that kind of luck. Their population numbers have been going down and down and down and down, mostly due to us inhabiting in their areas. So there's not as many of them out there as there once were. They've become fairly hard to find in the wild, which is unfortunate because they're a piece of American history. I don't think they get quite as much coverage because they're not the Western Diamondback or the Western movies or the timber rattlesnake that's on the flag, but they're such an amazing creature for their size. They definitely, if there's a rattlesnake that needs protection other than a timber right now, it is an Eastern. Definitely an Eastern. Okay, YouTube, one thing I want to show you is wolves. And there's not many places you can go in North America and actually see live wolves, but here they are. Uh, we've got one that's kind of interested in us. I don't know how long we'll hold his interest. We got some help in the background trying to keep him interested <laughs> for us. <laughs> but they are just gorgeous. And I remember coming with these things were pups. And now they're so not pups. I mean, they're probably, oh, here they come. Look at the size of that thing. Here, come on up here and get a good shot. You don't have to be in the background. Make, like I say, let them be the star. Look at the size of that wolf in that tank. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. And he's like, what's that camera? I don't know about this. <laughs> it's kind of funny to think that my little shit at home you guys have seen Jack is a distant relative of these. Well, these are British Columbia wolves, so, you know, talking Canadian. And everything's big in Canada, right? But all those, all dogs are descendants of wolves in some way, shape, or form. So you can kind of see how that's happened. And it still maintains that personality, but I guarantee you, if this was in my house, it wouldn't just lay on my couch like Jack does, right? Just so inquisitive and so powerful and still pack mentality. Just amazing creatures. And like I say, I don't know another place I've ever seen wolves this close like this. And they don't have just this, there's also an outdoor section. They get to go in indoor, outdoor freely as they choose. So they have a lot of space, they're really well cared for. It's just neat to see. Look at them wag your tails. Yeah, look at them all <laughs> snuggling Hey YouTube, we're almost at the end of the exhibit, but this is one of the neatest things. You saw all the big dogs. But now we got some smaller ones. These are dingoes, and you can actually get in here with the dingoes. People come see if I get down. You know, come here. I don't have any food. Oh, can I pet you? You don't know. They know this guy here. So tell me about these dingoes. Ah, uh, well, they are a smaller version of the Australian dingo, uh, uh, built for ships for their small stature, so that they could still be mobile uh, and take them where we need them to go. <laughs> they obviously know you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> kind of like surrounded by dingoes. I don't see them very often, so they get excited when they see me. <laughs> oh, look at them play. You getting this, dear? <laughs> yeah. How old are these dingoes? Uh, they range anywhere from two years to five years. What's their lifespan? A uh, little bit more than a dog. These guys uh, <laughs> will live uh, into their early 20s. Oh, wow. Do so they have a specialized diet that they require? Uh, they can eat a little bit of normal dog food, dry dog food, but they also get uh, raw protein as well. Uh, so uh, mostly chicken with, with vitamins. So just straight up raw meat with some mm -hmm. vitamin additives. Yep. So kind of just like the wild, huh, buddy? You guys are like, I don't know what's going on. And these guys sing, right? They do have a vocalization, yeah. They, they're, they're called singing dogs because uh, uh, everything they do is generally very noisy. They don't do a lot of vocalizing while people are in the exhibit, uh, but sometimes they do. <laughs> and you, can, you can hear them a little bit as they're playing, making a little bit of noise. God, they're playful. They're just like little yeah. puppies. Do you think they're siblings? Uh, the four boys are brothers, and the female is actually their niece from, uh, from another uh, facility. 
All right. Any questions about these dingoes? Oh. You asked all of them. Okay. Well, a few things I want to add. I want to first, before we get out of here, I want to make sure and say thanks to these guys for carrying us around, showing us off all their animals, walking us through, making sure we didn't miss anything, and telling us about these dingoes. And these are the two guys that have been with us. So go ahead and introduce yourselves really quick, if you don't mind. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm Zach. And Mike, you're the manager here, right? Yeah. So. I'm, I'm Mike. And I'm Zach. And you're the manager here, correct, Mike? I'm one of one of three managers. So he, you're in charge of a lot of the animal care. So he's kind of knows everything about these animals, has walked with us and told us a lot about them. A lot of the information we've given you has been from him. And getting us into these exhibits where these guys are running around. And Zach here also is another YouTuber. So make sure and check this out. I couldn't make this up if I tried. You guys all know Zeus. Well, this is Zeus the producer. So he's got the same name as my zebra beast. So make sure and go check that out and check out some of the music he's working on. I think that's all we got for in the dingo exhibit. Let's go see if there's anything else before we get out of here. We're going to go play some mini golf because they actually have an indoor mini golf here. It's even more fun if you have a family. We're going to go play on that and we'll see you all guys in a bit. All right, since it's vacation, we do do more than just look at animals. We're going to go play some mini golf here at the pirate mini golf scene, which is also located in Branson's Wild World. And from what I've been told, there's some live animals while we play mini golf. Let's go check it out. You ready, okay. Grandpa? We're on the way. I'm going to beat you. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little nine-hole golf course. Here's the cool thing. So you come to something like this, you look at animals all day, and then you got something else you can do with the kids, too. So like for a family experience, one thing I like is they've done a really good job of putting together multiple things for you to do. So I think it's really neat that they added mini golf here. I'm checking because we're waiting in line for us to get started. I think it's really neat that they have this as well as the animals and it can kind of be an entire family event and it's all included to one price. So you pay one price, you get this, you get the other part and you get to have a good time. And as you can see, Grandpa is stuck behind the sea turtle. <laughs> Go get it, Grandpa. This is quite an obstacle course. <laughs> <laughs> well, that rock right in the middle was like me. It's all you. Alright, now it's my Bingo. turn. Alright, question girl's gonna embarrass me. Supposed to keep filming and see how I do. What you guys don't know is I am a scratch PGA golfer. Not really, I'm terrible at golf. I can live with that. I can live with it. I don't know how you guys play. We play the club head rule. So I get to take a club head. There we go. There it is. Boy. That's a two. Almost dropped my club. That we'll was catch up with you and show you some animals. Shot. <laughs> so like I said, you go through playing mini golf with all this black lit mini golf. Your grandpa's talking with a pirate there. But on your adventure, you come across live animal exhibits. It's like this red-tailed boa right here. I think that's awesome because you get to do both. You get to see animals or you, you know, play mini golf and do something else fun. That kind of brings it all together. That's one of the reasons why I love coming to this place. It's like right here we have that red tail boa. We also have a bull snake down here, which is really cool. I know there's some clawed frogs over there, I believe. There's a little exhibit all on the way through here. It's so great. All right, guys, I'm gonna get back to playing because right now I think Grandpa's winning. <laughs> All right, YouTube, so we're still playing some mini golf. I think it's really close to me and Grandpa here. But we came to our last animal exhibit that I want to show you. And that is right here. I mean, listen, this is a golden crocodile. It's actually a Cuban. And here's the thing on it. Oh, I think we're kind of in the way of somebody's golf game. Here's the thing on this. You're probably thinking, how in the world can I get out of that water pit? These things can jump. I actually saw a video of this exact one jumping from a pit like that because they lower the water when they're going to feed it. So it's getting close to feed time, that water lowers, and that way they can, they can work on it. And it can leap up and get its head about halfway that door. It's one of the few gators that can do that from land, that can jump like that. Of course, when I say gator, I mean crocodilian. I say that for all crocodilians, uh, which makes it a little confusing. I should probably work on that. But go ahead. it can actually get out of that pit with that little bit of water. These things are awesome. And again, they're one of my favorites because the coloration on these is so cool. You just don't see anything really like this anywhere else. So, uh, oh, 
<laughs> there he's giving us a little bit of a show, lashing out a little bit, just kind of showing us his attitude, which is pretty typical of these guys. How cool is that? All right, guys, we're going to finish this golf game, let you know who won, and make our exit. But uh, thank you so much for coming on this journey this far with us. We're about done, I promise. All right, Grandpa Jeff, fun today? I had a lot of fun. It wore me out. Walked about uh, 10 miles, felt like. <laughs> but anyway, I enjoyed the day immensely. I'm glad you brought me here. Well, you've done more traveling than I have in your years. Would you recommend this for a family? This is one of the best family shows or places to visit that I've seen. Excellent. Every kid would be amazed at some of the animals that's here because they've got things nobody's seen before. I would agree. I love it. Man, you guys ready to hear who won on mini golf? It was close. Yeah, I, I have to take a bow that I lost. It was a question though, wasn't it? No, she didn't play. I told him I told him he lost 3129, but truth is he beat me. So anyway, congratulations. For all that trash talk I do, I still lose. Alright guys, we're gonna go home. Well actually not go home. We're gonna go back to our condo and continue our vacation. We got a few more stops that are animal related while we're here. So hopefully we'll show you some more cool stuff. But uh, I had a blast and these guys are so gracious to let us go around and film. So I wanna give a big thank you again to Branson's Wild World for taking such good care of us. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better crew to work with. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next week.